What is going on? Today's art lesson is all roads lead to Mecca and Mecca being YouTube. Welcome back to the Art Lessons Podcast, folks. I'm your host, Dave Connery, and this is an experiment in sharing, if this is your first time here. The reason we do what we do with the purpose of this show is to express real-time ideas about building a creative business and life, and I'm doing it the only way that I know I can, or the best way I know I can. How about that? And when I say the best way I know I can, I'm going to be talking a lot about video, and specifically YouTube, but video in general. And I'll get into that in just a second, but I want to talk to you a little bit about the edit that you're hearing or you will hear over the course of this particular episode. If you're on YouTube, everything should be normal. And if you're listening on the podcast, this edit may seem a little bit more aggressive. It may seem a little bit more choppy than normal. And the reason for that would be is that I'm not editing for the podcast this time around. I'm editing for the video. Now, why would I do that? Again, I'll explain it in a minute. I'll tell you that the last few episodes have all been edited specifically for the podcast. Even though I was recording on video, I tried very hard to not make visual references so that the people who were listening in the podcast didn't hear or couldn't see what I was talking about. I didn't want to alienate them for that. I did the typical longer breathing pauses between my edits because I wanted it to kind of seem like a flow, a natural flow of the conversation rather than these chippity choppity, these really quick hit edits. That's normally how I edit my video and I didn't know if it was going to work well in the podcast, but I decided to do it this time anyway because I am focusing my energy towards YouTube. Now, people who are listening strictly through the podcast, through the audio version, please don't feel like I'm abandoning you because I'm not. I'm, I'm definitely thinking about you. I'm thinking about you a lot. I've been contemplating this deeply and wondering if I should do it, but I witnessed something recently that changed my perspective on how this should work. Before I get too deep on should... I should, when I say should, I mean me, not necessarily you. Nobody listening should feel like I'm directly talking to you. If you are doing the same type of things I am, then maybe this will lend itself to you. But this has nuance to it that is about making video versus podcast and whatnot. And I'm only sharing this because there are lessons to be had here. And the reason that I'm sharing my process is so that you understand how I'm getting from this point that we're talking about right now to the thing that we're going to get into detail in just a minute. It really is the same type of mentality that you could probably incorporate into your own thing, whatever that thing is. It doesn't have to be video. doesn't have to be podcast. It could be something else. But it's about thinking about this from a standpoint of what's going to be best for me and my process. I was listening to this other podcast called Dynamic Banter, and it's with these two guys that originally were on a YouTube channel called SourceFed. They record their show in video, but they also release the video, of course. And when you listen to the audio version, they make plenty of visual references within the podcast that are pretty easy to discern. You may not necessarily see exactly what they're talking about when they're talking about things, but you can picture it in your head. That's kind of a good way to look at audio in general because if you can picture it in your head, then I've done a good job. The other aspect of that that encourages me to do this thing that I'm talking about is that sometimes when I would be listening to the podcast, it would encourage me to go check out the video version so that I could see what it was they were talking about in the first place. That's kind of what we're talking about here today. Leading people from wherever it is that you find me back to my hub. Now, if you listen to this podcast Two episodes ago, I talked about my whole process and how YouTube was the cornerstone. It was the corner piece to this whole game for me. And I've been slowly working my way into that frame of mind, but it's a learning process. One of the things that I learned pretty quickly is that I need to be sending a lot more traffic to YouTube if I'm going to make YouTube the thing. Here's something that I discovered pretty much end of July and most of August is that if you're not focusing your energy towards the thing that you feel like you do the best, the other platforms where you were just loosely basing your content and kind of touching bases here and there, they're going to penalize you. Let's say, for instance, you were on YouTube and then you're on Instagram and then you're on Twitter and then you're on Facebook and then you're on Pinterest and then you're on Tumblr or wherever it is, Snapchat. You're on all these different places, focusing all your energy in these different places and trying to touch base here, 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 here. What ends up happening is that you're not creating enough attention to the places that matter the most to the people watching, or to you and your platform, your business, your brand. That's how I feel about this. Little story. By the way, I was just checking my mic to make sure that I was actually recording 
because last week, obviously, I didn't <laughs> have the microphone on, but I am recording because I'm paying closer attention. Anyway, little story. I was talking to a Lyft driver the other day, driving around and asking him about Lyft. And he was telling me how much he likes Lyft and why he likes Lyft and all that. And how he said that he also used to do Uber as well as Lyft. And we got into talking about why he only does Lyft now. And what he shared with me was that it was easier for him to make money on Lyft if he just focused his energy there rather than trying to focus on both. Because each platform has its own bonus structure. And if you're trying to serve two kings, you're not going to get to that bonus structure. So if you're over here trying to serve Uber and over here trying to serve Lyft, you're not going to get enough rides on either one to hit your bonus. So he switched to Lyft and he started making more money because he was able to focus his energy on the thing that was going to bring in the most cash. Not to mention, it's the platform that he enjoyed the most. He preferred Lyft to Uber. He said he might have been able to make more money on Uber, but the way he felt about the company dictated where he was going. I'm not going to get into the politics of Uber versus Lyft. The point is, is that he enjoys that platform enough to say, that's the one I want to work on. So when I say, I want to work on YouTube, it's because I enjoy this platform more than anything else. No, more than podcasting, more than Instagram, more than Snapchat, more than Facebook, more than anything else. I enjoy this platform, this video platform on YouTube. Do I put video other places? Yes. But YouTube is my main love. And this is a new development for me. So I acknowledge that this could probably change in time. But right now, it's the thing that I really feel dedicated to. And I've felt dedicated to it for a little over a year and a half now. And because my attention towards it has waned very little, only in times of like high stress and having a lot of stuff to do, a lot of things on my plate that I've finally cluttered, gotten the clutter away. It was only in those small times that I said, ah, drudgery. But once I got rid of all that other stuff, YouTube was like a shining beacon to me. So now when you see me on social media and other places, I'm pointing everybody back to YouTube. I'm pointing this podcast back to YouTube. Sure, you can go check it out on iTunes. You can go check it out on Google Play. You can go find it in whatever podcast app you use. But I want you to go to YouTube. I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want you to watch the whole video on YouTube and like it up and share it with your people. I enjoy it. It feels good. I do well here and everything about it is right for me. It might not be for you. You have to figure that out on your own and whatever that thing is that you have to figure out, that should be the thing that you focus your energy on. Could be Instagram, could be Facebook, could be Twitter, could be Snapchat. It doesn't matter. It's not about which platform. It's about the energy that you put into that platform. I might have mentioned this before. I can't, I get it. Sometimes I can never remember when I mention it when I don't, but become a student of the game. Become a student of the game. Sometimes I say that phrase and people's eyes gloss over. Like they, they don't quite understand what I'm saying. Kobe Bryant would take a thousand shots every single day before anybody else on the Laker team even showed up. He was a student of the game. And that's why he became one of the greatest of all time. He kept taking shots, kept doing the thing, kept focusing his energy where it meant the most. And that's why he became one of the best. So for me, if I'm going to become a student of the game, I need to focus my game on YouTube because that's where I want to be. Taking lessons about pointing people to YouTube. Why do I want people to go to YouTube? Because I want more views on YouTube, because I want more people to come in and watch for longer periods of time on YouTube, because these are the things that help YouTube understand that my videos are worthwhile. If somebody is watching for longer periods of time and they're watching and continuing to watch, whether it's my videos or somebody else's videos and they get stuck on YouTube for a while, first off, sorry for letting you fall down that rabbit hole. My video that got you there is more valuable to not just me, but YouTube in general. And so then YouTube starts to recognize, hey, we should probably be putting this guy's stuff up in people's faces. And the more often I'm in up in people's faces, the more likely this channel is going to blow up. Let's hope. That's the dream. Long story short, if you see me anywhere online, you're most likely going to get links back to my YouTube channel. And if you're not already subscribed to that channel, not liking up my videos, not sharing those videos, what's wrong with you? Get on that, please. Help a brother out. I enjoy that you listen to this on your iTunes playlist or your your Android app, whatever. I, I appreciate that you're here from SoundCloud. I appreciate that you might have seen this video on Facebook. But what I would really love... If you're enjoying this content, is I would love for you to go over to YouTube and say, Hey, Dave, I'm here. Thanks for putting it out. You don't have to, but that's what I'd like. I'm at least going to put that out there. Couldn't hurt. Okay. Question of the day. 
So I didn't get a question of the day this time around. Didn't I get a question? Of the day? I don't know what it is about you folks. Like, you could ask me anything you wanted, but you don't. I don't care what the question is. As long as it's not completely and totally salacious, I'll answer anything. Doesn't have to be biz related. Doesn't even have to be art related. You could be asking me about what my favorite color is. I think that's pretty obvious, but you could. Anyway, question of the day is actually going back to Connor, our guy from last week. In retrospect, I realized I didn't actually answer his real question. You know, sometimes when you hear something and then you automatically just start thinking to yourself like, oh, I know what he's talking about. And really, it's just this thing that you processed in your head, turned it into something different. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, so Connor's question, he was talking to me about YouTube, about schedule, you know, doing all the content and blah, blah, blah. And he said, I was wondering, Dave, how do you stay consistent with your videos and artwork? That was the real question he was asking. And I told him, yes, you do need to stay consistent. Well, yeah. Duh. Please read the question as it was written, not as it was spoken in your head. Connor, we're going to try this again. And this time, what I'm going to tell you is basically the same. If you go back to two episodes where I talked about my process, I have focused my energy in a way that allows me to create content that can be generated for other places, whether it starts in YouTube and then goes to Instagram, goes to Facebook, goes wherever, and creates art all in the same space. I'm going to be making a video later this week that's going to be me creating art. And I'm going to be doing that specifically for a vlog. And when I make that vlog, I'm going to put that out and I can create imagery and audio and stuff that I can put in other places. Because I'm focusing my energy in this one platform right here on the YouTubes, knowing how that all maps out. I know I need to create a certain amount of art. I know I need to create audio. I know I need to create video. But how is it also going to be beneficial for Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook? Or even if I were just to print something out and post it up on a board at some local coffee shop. I don't do that, but I could. It's important first to understand where you work the best. Connor, I know you're doing a really good job with YouTube. Keep that up. Do that thing. You're making art while you're doing your YouTube videos. Do that more often and then share that with other people in other places. Share snippets on Instagram, share tidbits on Facebook or Snapchat, and then lead everybody back to YouTube, just like I'm doing. If that's the platform you wanna be on. If you wanna be on another platform, then figure out how to create the same type of process around that platform. It could be Instagram. So you make your videos, but you make them in one minute segments. Or you make your portrait videos that you can cut up into 15 minute, 15 minutes? 15 second increments that you can bring up into Insta stories or Snapchat or wherever. Spread that out. Start at the center and you move your way out, but then you bring everybody back to center. Let us move on. Artist of the day. Do you even understand me when I'm saying that? Let's talk about today's artist of the day, which is actually of the week, but it's today. Another thing I realized last week is when I was sharing Leanne Toki with y'all, uh, one of the things that I didn't make completely clear is that not only am I gonna be sharing people with you guys every week, but I'm gonna be sharing people who you may never have run across yourself. I'm gonna be sharing the people who have the small social media platforms because I wanna help them out, because they have valuable work, they do good things, they have a need for attention that they're not getting and they deserve. And so I'm gonna share those people, people I'm connected with, people that I'm inspired by with the work that they do, but I'm gonna send people over there because that's what I want. I want to spread the love, not to these big name people. I'm gonna send it to the people you've never met and then you guys can meet. Maybe that becomes a budding relationship that turns into something awesome for either of you or both of you. That's the plan, we're sticking to it. So today's art is a woman by the name of Nikki Hare. N-I-K-I-H-A-R-E. My battery's gonna die. Unrelated sidebar, if anybody at Canon is listening, but it would be really nice if we could have a camera that you can change the battery or take out the card without having to remove the tripod foot shoe whatever if you could have that that would be great then i wouldn't have to completely disassemble my rig just to get the battery out anyway as i say in our artist of the day is nikki hair she's based out of gloucester united kingdom british isles i'm saying it like the bostonians might say gloucester Glou it's gloucester maybe i don't know yeah, but that's where she's at in the United Kingdom. And Nikki does really phenomenal abstract work. If you're any fan of mine, you know that I like letters and lettering and typography. And she does a lot of that. She uses a lot of letter forms in her stuff. She's actually, I've asked her before, I asked her, hey, where did you get these gigantic stencils? I can't find anything like that. She said she made them herself. You can find her, like I said, on Instagram, Nikki Hare, N-I-K-I-H-A-R-E. You can also find her website the same place. She does some really phenomenal work. I will show here in the video and if you're listening to the podcast, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You can see these 
these images on the video, but you can't on the podcast, so you're just going to have to do your own due diligence to either come see them on the video or go check her out on her social media accounts and say hi. Tell her I sent you. Dave sent us over here to give you props and like up all your photos and maybe connect and become friends and who knows where that will lead so yes please go check out nikki and make sure you give her a shout lots of likes spread some love around because nikki's uh worthwhile she's somebody that's doing some really phenomenal work and i think needs more attention and you should go give it to her all right folks that's it i'm gonna wrap this sucker up but before i go remember if you want to have your question answered to have your art shared you need to send me a message or hit me up in the comments on youtube go there find me do that thing and if you can't find me on youtube you don't want to go there just go to instagram twitter hit me up there too and I will talk to you but it's best on YouTube and since you're going to be on YouTube anyway you might as well subscribe and there's that little bell thing to hit that to make sure you don't ever miss a singular episode I'm done remember be good today even better tomorrow I will see you on Thursday